Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic um, where today I'm going to take a look at a puzzle that's been uh, requested by a viewer. Um, if you do have a puzzle you'd like to see us solve then you can email us at crackingthecryptic at gmail.com or tweet to us at crypticcracking. Uh, just take a photo of the, the grid and, and send it over and if we have time we'll certainly try and cover it on the channel. A uh, big welcome to, to our new subscribers. We've had um, quite a a uh, good few days on the channel, uh, so a lot of new uh, new people. Welcome to the family. Uh, we shall certainly try and keep you entertained with our puzzle solving. Now, this puzzle, as I say, it's been sent in, and um, I think what what the person's done is that they've put this into a solver, and the solver has told them that it required an X-wing to solve it, and they don't seem to be uh, terribly um, comfortable with what an X-Wing is or how to spot it. So that's what we're going to talk about today in the video, hopefully if I can spot it. Um, so without further ado, let's kick off and try and solve the puzzle. Now, as usual, I'm going to start with what I call standard notation, which is um, a variant of pencil marking the grid uh, that was taught to me by guy called Thomas Snyder, three-time World Sudoku Champion, um, and uh, it certainly improved my solving uh, no end. And how does that work? Well, well, the way that works is in three by three blocks, like the one the cursor is going around at the moment, if I can lock a number into exactly two positions in that three by three block, then I'll make little pencil marks to remind me of the fact. So, for example, in this block, you can see we have a three here and a three here. So I would pencil mark the threes into those two positions. Now, of course, in this particular case, there's a three up here, so in fact, we get to put in a big number. But those are the sorts of pencil marks that I'm going to make. You can see the three here, the three here, so I can pencil mark up, up at the top there. Now, why do I do this? Well, it's a good way of keeping track without getting too cluttered. And one of the big problems and one of the, I suppose, the no-nos, in my opinion, about efficient Stoku solving is that we put in too many pencil marks in each and every um, block of the grid and that is not the way to improve your solving. Let's carry on. Fives here, five, five. Again we have a five there so this square here is going to have to be a five and again I make, get to make some little pencil marks uh, at the bottom there. Uh, two, two and this two here so this square is going to be a two. I don't know how hard this puzzle is, by the way. It might turn out to be monstrously difficult before we get to the X-Wing, but I'm, I'm hoping not. Fours, fours, fours into those two squares. Um, okay, we'll start our eights. Eight, eight, and this eight here. So this square here is going to have to be a, a big eight. We get to make pencil marked eights at the bottom there. And pencil marked sevens. Seven here, seven here. So there's got to be a 7 in one of those two squares. 2's. Ah, 2, this is interesting, 4 and a 4 here. So I get to find a pair in this block here, this 2 and a 4. Now because of the logic involved in these pencil marks, once I have um, the two numbers 2 and 4 in just these two cells, I now know this forms a 2-4 pair. So I know one of these cells will be a 2, one of these cells will be a 4. So the logic of that indicates that we can't put anything else into these two squares. Now, interestingly, that doesn't really help. This 5 here is therefore shifted up onto the right-hand side of this cage. Uh, oh, actually, it does help, look, because that means there's going to be a 5 in one of those two positions. And there's a 5 over there, so this is a 5. And that helps in the top block. Now you can see this 5, this 5, and this 5 interact on this 3x3 three three block to allow us to pencil mark a 5 in there. Again, let's keep, keep going with the pencil marks. It 5's into one of these two squares. And we're left with a 1 and a 7 into these two positions. Now, that's certainly something we should keep track of. I don't know if it's going to be enough for the X-Wing. I don't think it will be because we, we don't have enough information with the 1s or the 7s. If you actually look around the grid there are very few 1s and 7s um, and they aren't really interacting strongly on these two squares so I doubt that that's the X-Wing we're looking for. 
Um, let me just stare at this for a moment. Okay, right, but we are at the point now where we can spot the X-Wing. In fact, we don't want to look at 1s and 7s, we want to look at 8s. And the reason uh, the reason that eights are very interesting is let's take a particular let's start by looking at column two. If we look at column two and ask ourselves where we can place an eight, this eight is very powerful in the way that it interacts with the digits we've already placed because it rules out these two squares. So we can place an eight here, we can't place an eight here because of this eight, and we can place an eight there. So the eights are locked into two positions in the column. Now this is classic X-wing territory, a bit like the ones and sevens over here, but this time the eights are very powerful. And let me show you why. So remember, with an X-wing, what we're looking for is another column of the grid where the eights are restricted to exactly these two rows. So row one and row eight of the grid. So do test yourself now. Pause the puzzle and see if you can identify which the interesting column is. Now, if you take a look now at column 7 here, we can ask ourselves the same question. Here, this 8 becomes the powerful 8 because it rules out an 8 from any of those positions, which means the 8 is again it's locked into this position or this position. And here we have this X, so called X wing pattern. Now, why is it called an X wing? I'll add some highlighting at the end of the video. But the key thing to realize if you ever come across this pattern is that in the finished solution, when we look at it, there'll either be an 8 in this square and this square, or there'll be an 8 in this square and this square. Now, why is that? Let's ask ourselves why. Let's just go through it. Um, I know that some of you who've been following the channel for ages will be very familiar with this. But if you're new to the channel, you may not be as comfortable with what we're talking about. The, the reason is that because the eights are limited to exactly two positions in these columns, as soon as we decide which one is the eight, so let's, for example, let's just decide this is the eight, see how what would, what would be the consequence of that. Now, the moment we make this square the eight, you can see that because there's only two positions the eight can go in in column seven, it can no longer go in this position, so it must go in this position, like this. And similarly, if instead we were to say this square was the 8, that's the only other possibility, we immediately find this square therefore can't be an 8, so this one would be the 8. So we end up with 8s on the sort of edges of this X shape. Now you may say, well, how is that helpful? Well, the reason it's helpful is we have to consider how these 8s now interact on the rest of the rows. So the rest of row 1 and the rest of row 8. So in fact this is very useful in terms of the pencil marks. Let's ask ourselves the question, can this square, which we've got a pencil marked 8 in, can this square ever contain an 8? Let's put one in and see. So the implication of this square being an 8 would be looking at column 7 now, this, is, this cannot be an 8 anymore, so this will have to be an 8 up here. Let's put it in looking now, I'm sure most of you are there already, looking now at column 2, this square can't be an 8 anymore. So this is going to have to be the 8 up there. Oops, and even the computer understands there's a problem here. We now have a repeated 8 in row 1 because we know that from our X-wing pattern the, X is, the 8s are going to have to be along the diagonals of the 8. They can, they can obviously not be in the same row. So that is the power of the X-Wing. Once you spot one of these, you can eliminate 8s right along the row. So there is no way an 8 can be anywhere other than in either this position or this position in row 1, or this position or this position in row 8. Definitely not here. So we can remove the 8. And look how this interacts with the pencil marks we made earlier. Because this is not an 8 here anymore, this must be the 8. Now the moment I place this 8, because of the earlier pencil marks, I've just rubbed out one of my pencil marked 4s. So this square now must be a 4. The moment I do that, 
I eliminate one of the pencil mark sevens I had in this block. So again, just I get three really helpful numbers as a result of the X wing. And let's see if that's enough to really um, break the puzzle open. I'm hoping it will be. Um, uh, so what can we see immediately? Well, I suppose this four and this four interact up here to allow us to pencil mark fours into. Oh, what am I doing? To pencil mark fours into those two squares, um, which means we can pencil mark some fours up there too. Um, what next? We can pencil mark sevens into one of these two squares. Uh, da, 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 da. Nines now. This nine here is forcing the position of the nine in this three by three block, especially when it interacts with this one. So in fact, that's going to have to be a nine. Let's put some pencil marks in as a result of that. Nines there. And now, where can we put a nine in this three by three block? Well, there's only one position left, and that's going to be there. And in fact, the same is true here. We get to place this nine because this nine eliminates it from this square and, and I think the puzzle is now solved because you can see everything starting to chain. This nine now and this nine mean there's going to have to be a nine in this square and again because of our pencil marks the moment I place this nine I can also place a three. Now I can continue with the nines firstly let's do the nines this nine and this nine and this nine interact there's going to have to be a nine there Again, use the pencil marks. That means there's a nine here. I think the puzzle. I think we've now filled in all the nines, and we also got this three, didn't we? So let's make sure we don't uh, stop using that. Is that really helpful? I think we can just place a three into one of those two squares. Um, one, seven, eight. So now we can pencil mark sevens over here. Maybe we could have done that before. And where can we place an 8 in this block? Well, there's only one position. That's got to be there. That means this is an 8 here now. Oh, hang on. Um, and let's also remember that this 8 here was part of the, the X wing. So the moment I place this 8, I can slide down whoosh, um, to the other end of the X or this stroke of the X if you like, this is not going to be an 8 here anymore, that's going to have to be an 8. The moment I place that I get to put the 7 in as well. So you can see, I hope, I hope I've explained that okay, just how powerful um, the X-Wing technique is. It's Now you may say, yeah, but you spotted it relatively quickly. Well, it, will, it wasn't too difficult to spot if you know what you're looking for. And Believe me, all that is is practice. The more you practice these puzzles, the more you're familiar with the X-Wing technique, the more naturally it comes to look for that sort of logic. Um, so I will just, I suppose, let's just carry on, finish the puzzle off today. Six is here, one's here. Um, that means this square here is gonna have to be an eight, I think. Uh, so we're looking for one and six into these two squares and presumably one and six into these two squares as well in order to finish off these rows. Let's take a quick look now at column six of the grid just because we've got five numbers in it already. We're looking for one, three, four, six. Three, four here, one, no, that's no good. Two, four along here. Ah, this one here and this one here, so that's going to be a 1. That means this must be a 2-4 pair and we have a 2 here. So nothing magical about this now, just simply tidying up the sole. That gives us a 2-5 pair in the pencil marks because of the 2 here and the 2 here. I need 3 and 6 to complete this block, which resolves everything at the bottom now. So 6-1, 6-1. Again, you can see the power of these pencil marks. The ones interact on the central block. Now we have a 1-5 pair in the central block. And that should allow us to complete um, uh, column 5. If we slide up the block, we're looking for, what are we looking for? 2 and 4. But in this block, we've already pencil marked 4s into these two squares. Well, I know this one must be the 4. 
So the moment I place this 4, I can also place the 2. 2's into those, so we can pencil our 2's there. And what am I looking for there? 3 and 6 by the looks of it, which I can't quite resolve. 3 and 6, 2, 3, 6. I mean, at this point, I think it's uh, it's basically done, isn't it? You can see now this 3-1 three, three, resolves here. 3 and 1 like that, that gives us the 1 and 5. This must be a 1 now. 5 and 7 to complete that column. So that means that's that way around. That resolves the 5 and the 2. Use the pencil marks to resolve that too. This is now a three or a six to complete the column, and there's a six here. And I hope I'm giving you an idea of how you can, the more you practice this method, the more speedy you can actually get. And this is the way really to become uh, competitive in speed solving as well, because these pencil marks, that, that they're quick to make, and if you really make use of them, you can burn through puzzles even of relatively sophisticated difficulty. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that was interesting solved today. Uh, we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. If you do enjoy the channel, please do subscribe. We really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up. Um, our belief is that YouTube recognizes that in some way. Um, it's probably wrong, but you never know. And uh, we'll be back soon, as I say, with another edition.